Hello to all of you. Uh, I hope you had the uh, chance to go through the last lecture contents. Now we would briefly look at the uh, lecture that we did in last time in a brief way. Uh, we basically uh, looked at the beta cleavage uh, in uh, these Barton type of reactions where hypohalides were utilized. And then uh, uh, actually it should be cleavage uh, and then we also looked at the oxidation using uh, sodium hypochlorite uh, based oxidation and tempo. And then we had a pinic oxidation in which uh, we converted uh, the uh, aldehydes to the corresponding acid. And then finally, we also looked at the pseudomonas potato based reactions. So, we, ha we have uh, basically a pseudomonas, uh, it should be pseudomonas. Monas putida. And this allowed the oxidation of uh, different types of uh, benzene molecules to the corresponding 1, 2 diol where the 1, 2 diol were cis oriented. And then this can be converted to different types of natural products. Now, we would uh, stop the uh, oxidations at this stage. We have con covered a large topics of oxidation of different types and some of them old type and some of them new type. And now we would proceed to the corresponding reductions in organic chemistry. Now, if we look at the uh, different types of reagents that are utilized in organic chemistry for the reduction of uh, say aldehydes or ketones uh, or the carbonyl compounds to the corresponding hydroxy compounds or say alpha beta unsaturated ketones to the corresponding reduced products uh, of allylic alcohol type or saturated type or simply double bond is reduced and that leads to the corresponding ketone. So, the reagents that are commonly employed are sodium borohydride and lithium aluminum hydride. Now, if one carries out the reduction of uh, ketones, uh, we do not have much problem and if the molecule is not very sensitive molecule does not have other functional groups, then the carbonyl group can be readily reduced to the corresponding alcohol using any one of them either sodium borohydride or say lithium aluminum hydride. And uh, if one takes the alpha beta unsaturated ketone such as this and if uh, one wants to convert this into the corresponding allylic alcohol then the reagent that is commonly employed is lithium aluminum hydride. And but it also can, can lead to the corresponding saturated alcohol or under certain conditions can also lead to the corresponding ketone which in which the double bond has been only reduced particularly at uh, when we carry out the reaction with sodium borohydride at low temperature we can mainly get this. But lithium aluminum hydride always gives the allylic alcohol. We can also find certain conditions under which we can get these two molecules with both sodium borohydride as well as lithium aluminum hydride. So, now there, is, there are several possibilities of uh, converting different types of 
aldehydic or ketonic molecules to the corresponding alcohols. One major difference between sodium borohydride uh, reactions and uh, lithium aluminum hydride based reactions is that sodium borohydride uh, is normally used in polar protic solvents such as ethanol, methanol or say isopropanol etc. That is because uh, sodium borohydride is uh, ionic uh, or rather more ionic than the lithium aluminum hydride and therefore more protic polar solvents are used. On the other hand lithium aluminum hydride which is uh, uh, very reactive towards uh, uh, moisture and that is why solvents which are non protic solvents such as uh, dry THF, tetrahydrofuran, diethyl ether or any other ether or 1,2-dimethoxyethane which is also a an ether are used because lithium aluminum hydride uh, reacts violently with uh, water and therefore this solvents which uh, are used are non-protic solvent because in with ethanol and methanol lithium aluminum hydride itself will react and therefore the solvents which are used uh, are such which do not have any which does not have a source of proton and also uh, it should be specifically made moisture free. At the same time both uh, lithium aluminum hydride and sodium borohydride react with alcoholic solvents. It is not that the sodium borohydride does not react with alcoholic solvents especially methanol and ethanol. But it reacts very slowly and hence uh, the alcoholic solvent such as methanol or ethanol can be utilized during the reductions using uh, sodium borohydride. As I mentioned lithium aluminum hydride reacts violently with water causing fire. In fact it should not even the bottle of the lithium aluminum hydride should not even be opened uh, when there is a moisture in the uh, atmosphere. Hence uh, the solvents which are used have to be made moisture free. Now uh, lithium aluminum hydride uh, as sodium borohydride does reacts readily with uh, uh, carbonyl compounds aldehyde or ketones to form the corresponding alcohol. At the same time the carboxylic acids or the corresponding esters can be converted to the corresponding primary alcohol using uh, lithium aluminum hydride. But that is not the case with sodium borohydride. Sodium borohydride does not readily react with uh, acids or esters or say for example lactones or the nitriles or the nitro compound or even the acetylene. So, uh, in these reactions lithium aluminum hydride is supposed to be a better reducing agent. We will discuss the mechanistic aspects of conversion of the ester to the alcohol or say uh, cyanide to the corresponding amine uh, a bit later. Uh, but for the first uh, we see what happens to the corresponding acid here. Obviously when we have the acid and react with say lithium aluminum hydride it uh, forms uh, the um, O minus Li plus and of course you get ALH3 uh, with the release of uh, hydrogen. That means the ALH4 uh, part H ALH4 part which is negatively charged takes up the proton first from here and we generate this species which is what uh, then eventually forms the corresponding uh, oxygen containing or something of this type with a negative charge here and lithium plus. So uh, this, uh, this then undergoes reduction this path undergoes reduction further with lithium aluminum hydride and finally via aldehyde it forms the corresponding alcohol. 
So uh, this is how the reaction occurs. So basically what is happening is that acid molecule allows this deprotonation to form this type of intermediate and then that undergoes uh, the reduction. Now we also have uh, uh, nitrile to the corresponding amine and nitro can be converted to the amine and of course azide can be converted to the amine too. So we have this uh, nitro uh, group which can um, react uh, with uh, the reducing agent and uh, what we have is uh, essentially what we have is uh, you have something like this here and just the way as we discussed above it, it can uh, first react with lithium plus to form this and of course you have an LH4 minus. Now this allows the reduction to begin and then finally it leads to the corresponding amine here. In a similar fashion we have uh, azide where we can say that we have something like this as a resulting part of the azide in which basically what we have is uh, uh, this, this part here as a uh, uh, point where the reduction occurs with the loss of nitrogen and then eventually forming the corresponding amine and of course you lose nitrogen. So this one can write down the mechanism and I think I suggest that you people try to write a mechanism for both the nitro to the amine where you have stepwise um, transfer of a hydride from lithium aluminum hydride and eventually uh, you try to work out what leaving groups are and of course in the similar fashion you can write down the mechanism for the reduction of the azide. And then uh, you have the acetylene and that uh, forms the corresponding transolefin here which is very simple and we will discuss this a little bit later. So these are the variety of things which can be um, uh, used uh, which can be uh, looked at from the reduction point of view using lithium aluminum hydride. At the same time uh, lithium aluminum hydride uh, which allows uh, reduction of epoxides. So if we have a simple epoxide like this where there is no uh, discrimination in terms of the two carbons here, so it does not matter where the reduction occurs and readily you can get the corresponding hydroxy group. So basically the lithium aluminum hydride can react on either side of it and lead to similar molecule. On the other hand when we have uh, an unsymmetrical epoxide like this where there is one um, tertiary center and then the quaternary center then obviously the reduction takes place at the uh, less hindered carbon atom because the lithium aluminum hydride based reductions occur in an in a SN2 fashion. So if SN2 reaction is taking place it has to be at the statically less hindered carbon. But at the same time uh, if uh, there is uh, such a molecule where both the carbons are similar but they are also equally statically hindered then obviously the reaction will occur and now as you can see that uh, if this the stereochemistry here is alpha then uh, as you can see that the geometry of the methyl group here upon SN2 reaction has changed to the corresponding alpha orientation because it was originally a beta orientation now it has become alpha because there is an SN2 reaction. And of course the hydroxy group is lost from here to here which retains the geometry from the alpha side. So uh, the difference between this uh, and this and this is only the degree of uh, substitutions on either end of the epoxide. This was not substituted so it does not matter this was substituted but then we had a choice of between 
the more substituted and less substituted and of course the reaction occurred at the less substituted carbon. In this case the reaction occurs uh, on any uh, on of the two carbons because they are symmetrical but there is a uh, change in the stereochemistry of the substituent because it is an SN2 reaction. And uh, in such cases where the reaction has to take place at the um, highly substituted carbons you might have to uh, provide energy by heating the reaction medium. At the same time uh, as you can see that um, one can uh, have molecules like this in which uh, there is a possibility of uh, having an asymmetric carbon atom and the epoxide has a less substituted uh, epoxide terminal where the reduction leads to the formation of this um, um, tertiary alcohol. So one can start with uh, such kind of uh, complicated molecules where the reduction could lead uh, to the uh, desired molecule via an SN2 based reductions using lithium aluminum hydride. Now where uh, there are uh, steric factors that can be uh, allowed to be put on these uh, sodium borohydride and lithium aluminum hydride. As I mentioned that sodium borohydride as well as lithium aluminum hydride both react with alcohols. The only difference is the sodium borohydride reacts relatively slowly and the lithium aluminum hydride reacts violently with alcoholic solvents or even water. So if uh, one wants to increase the, uh, the steric bulk of uh, these reducing agents then what one can do is uh, to react deliberately say sodium borohydride uh, with uh, say methanol or uh, ethanol or any other alcoholic solvent and gradually increase uh, the, the bulk. Say for example one can have only one uh, alcohol and then we have these three or we can have uh, two of them and then we will be left out with two hydrogens and like this one can go to the corresponding uh, tri substituted this sodium boro alkoxy hydride. In a similar fashion one can uh, convert uh, this lithium aluminum hydride uh, using any one of these to the ultimately to this particular molecule. Now one can also use in this case and it is available even commercially is one can put the uh, very bulky tertiary bitoxy group and you have this lithium tri tertiary bitoxy aluminum hydride. So you have lithium uh, tri tertiary butoxy tri tertiary butoxy aluminum hydride. So uh, basically such reducing agents can be generated can be prepared or some of them are commercially available and we can make use of these for the reductions where the uh, steric hindrance can be uh, utilized to the maximum extent. Uh, for example, if one has uh, uh, an epoxide where we are going to reduce and if the epoxide happens to be um, uh, not that sterically hindered, uh, so there is a possibility of getting reductions at the both, both the end. Although it is an SN2 reaction, but it can give reduction at both the ends and one of them being major. But at the same time if we use say lithium tritrashe butoxy aluminum hydride then the chances of uh, getting one product in a very large ratio are very high. This uh, lithium aluminum hydride based reductions using ester to the corresponding um, alcohol proceed via aldehyde the corresponding aldehyde. Now basically uh, the difference uh, what happens is that we have the ester in which we have the um, carbonyl group here and uh, it could react with the lithium plus to form this type of 
intermediate and this uh, it should be H4 and uh, then what can happen is uh, it can then react with uh, aluminum hydride where the hydride transfer occurs onto the carbonyl carbon which is now coordinating with the lithium plus and therefore this carbon is electrophilic and then you form the intermediate of this type which is a tetrahedral intermediate. And this O minus then reacts with the released because once the uh, aluminum hydride reacts by the transfer of uh, hydrogen as a hydride to the ester this is the intermediate is formed but what is released from here is ALH3 and which is a trivalent aluminum and that is electrophilic in nature and therefore this O minus reacts with the uh, ALH3 to form another tetrahedral intermediate of this kind. Now this tetrahedral intermediate as well as this tetrahedral intermediate are both ionic in nature and therefore these are not so stable and decompose under the reaction conditions to uh, form the corresponding aldehyde. Now we have started with an ester and as soon as the reaction occurs we get the aldehyde. Now there is a competition for reaction with the aldehyde and the ester towards lithium aluminum hydride and it is obvious that the aldehyde is uh, more reactive because the aldehyde carbonyl carbon is more electrophilic and therefore the reduction gives directly to the alcohol. And like this the reaction takes place and though so the conversion of ester to the alcohol which occurs via aldehyde uh, is um, uh, cannot be easily stopped at the aldehyde stage mainly because the tetrahedral intermediates which are formed in these reactions are ionic in nature and therefore are not stable under the reaction conditions and decompose faster to the corresponding aldehyde. In a similar fashion uh, the nitrile uh, reacts with the lithium aluminum hydride. So we have the uh, nitrile group here which uh, uh, interacts with the lithium uh, plus here like this forming uh, nitrinium ion here and ALH4 minus which leads to the formation of this intermediate here. And since there is a uh, possibility of uh, transferring another hydrogen onto this species here, another species uh, molecule reacts with the ALH3 part and therefore two of these uh, are associated with uh, the um, reducing agent and then lithium aluminum hydride reacts and reduces this imine to form this and eventually this is then hydrolyzed to the corresponding amine. So this is how the reaction of a nitrile takes place. So um, nitrile reaction reduction occurs uh, in such a fashion that the uh, lithium plus interacts first with the uh, nitrile nitrogen aluminum hydride transfers an electron or the hydrogen hydride to form this imine and then that undergoes uh, reaction with another nitrile and forming two of these uh, such imine moieties associated with the aluminum and the lithium and then eventually the remaining uh, lithium aluminum hydride reduces this imine to the corresponding amine. Of course it is ionic in the nature and therefore protonation uh, under water condition finally gives the amine. Now if you look at the uh, reduction of uh, alpha beta unsaturated ketones or aldehydes there is an interesting uh, observation that has been uh, reported in the literature. For example, if one takes uh, an alpha beta unsaturated 
system like this where there is uh, a substitution of R at the carbonyl uh, which can be hydrogen or other substituents such as R1 and R2. Now if 1, 2 reduction takes place that is this is the 1, 2. So you have 1, 2, 3 and 4. So if uh, one looks at the 1, 2 reduction if the hydrogen directly reacts uh, as a hydride at the carbonyl carbon here one directly gets this uh, uh, particular species uh, and then that upon uh, protonation uh, gives the allylic alcohol. That means the double bond is not affected. On the other hand if uh, there is 1, 4 reduction that means the uh, hydride attacks on the fourth position and eventually you get uh, an enolate of this kind where hydrogen is reacting at the fourth position and anion is coming at the first position. So it is a 1, 4 reduction and then that after uh, the uh, protonation forms the corresponding ketone because the enol will go to the corresponding ketone. Uh, there is a, a possibility of uh, this type of uh, transfer of hydrogen at the 1 fourth position where the oxygen interacts with the uh, uh, aluminum eventually but first with the lithium and then aluminum and then uh, one can transfer the hydride in this fashion. If R is a small group like hydrogen in aldehyde then 1, 2 addition product uh, dominates. This is what is observed. When R1 and R2 substituents uh, increase in size conjugate addition is sterically inhibited. Obviously when we have the R1 and R2 which are big in size therefore attack of the hydrogen at the fourth carbon would be inhibited and more of 1, 2 reductions take place. So for 1, 2 reduction to take place it is aldehyde uh, which is an alpha beta ansage aldehyde or substituents uh, having large groups at the R1 and R2 uh, lead to 1, 2 reduction. On the other hand conjugate addition is more common to uh, alpha beta unsaturated ketones uh, not the aldehydes. And uh, conjugate addition is uh, rare for alpha beta unsaturated aldehydes. That means because mainly the uh, reduction occurs at the carbonyl carbon of the aldehyde directly. Uh, so reduction of alpha beta unsaturated carbonyls is not really a straightforward uh, path using lithium aluminum hydride because it depends on various factors whether it is aldehyde or a ketone or the substituents, uh, etc. So uh, we will uh, uh, stop it uh, at this stage uh, uh, today and we will continue with the reduction of um, uh, various organic compounds using different types of reducing agents uh, in the next class and subsequently in the next classes. So in the, this, uh, in the meanwhile you can go through and brush up all the uh, things that I have discussed today uh, as far as reductions are concerned. and. We will see you next time. Uh, goodbye and thank you.